Hi, I'm Dr. Megan Samaraki, a professor at Rhode Island College, and today I'm going to talk about the difference between short-term memory and working memory. And this was actually a question submitted by one of our Patreon supporters. So if you have questions that you want answered, let us know and we'll try to answer them. So there's of course short-term sort of immediate working, uh, immediate memory, and then there's long-term memory. And our long-term memory is actually probably shorter than a lot of us think it is. So something that was said even five minutes ago is probably in your long-term memory at this point. And if you bring it to mind, you're going to have to think back and retrieve it. Unless of course you've been thinking about it, working with it and rehearsing it, you know, since all, all the time since it was said. So long-term is longer than immediate, but not necessarily a day or two days or a week ago. Although all of that stuff would be long-term memory as well. But in our immediate memory, we have short-term memory and working memory. And that is really just two conceptualizations of the same idea, this idea of immediate memory. Short-term memory is an older concept and it is uh, associated with sort of static, just sort of rote memorization or rote rehearsal of information. So the way that we test someone's short-term memory is just to list off a series of digits and then have them just recite those digits back in the exact same order. And you continue to add one every time until a person can't do it anymore. And they can usually remember about seven plus or minus two digits in that case or just sort of chunks of information. But that's very static. It's just memorizing that information and sort of rehearsing it, almost like a, like a juggler just holding you know, balls in the air. Working memory is a newer conceptualization of immediate memory, although it's not actually that new anymore. Alan Badley came up with it in the 1970s. But working memory is still immediate memory, but it emphasizes this attentional control aspect of our immediate memory. The fact that we're often having to process a lot of different things coming in or kind of maintaining goals while, while doing a few things um, sort of in, in rapid succession. So an example might be trying to retain information and then connecting it to stuff that we already know. So if you're sitting in a class or you're watching a video, you might be kind of listening to what the person is saying and trying to comprehend that information while thinking back and sort of connecting it to your own life. And that's sort of doing two different things at once uh, in, in a way. A student might be trying to listen to a teacher give a lecture while also looking at visuals that might be available and then in addition trying to take notes. That has a pretty strong demand on our working memory because you're trying to manage all of those different things at once and that's why we call it working memory. And so it's really our working memory that is highly linked to success in school. So um, children who have lower working memory capacities might be quite intelligent, but some research suggests that it will be difficult for them to sort of maintain that attentional control and listen to what's going on and comprehend what's going on while making the connections or while taking notes. Um, so for example, in my classes, I like to give my students copies of the slides ahead of time, the PowerPoint slides that I use. I usually use a lot of visuals and try to keep words to a minimum but I still give it to them ahead of time so that they don't feel like they need to write down every single thing going on on the screen because that's going to take away from their ability to listen to what I'm saying and make those connections. So again, really working memory is just emphasizing that attentional control, whereas short-term memory is just about sort of holding something in mind in a very static sort of way, just keeping it in order. But both are, are really about this immediate memory. It's not like we have a, a short-term memory box in our brain and a working memory box in our brain and they're two completely separate, separate things. And we can dissociate those immediate systems from our long-term memory.